You asked for a library tour, you shall receive a library tour. Hey folks, it's Abby from Abby of Pelinor, and yeah, the title says it all. Today I'm going to be showing you around my library. So this is in the spare room in my house, the smallest room. We have five Billy bookshelves from Ikea, no one is surprised. And I'm going to be showing you how I've got them organised. So, where do I even start? Let's start with the shelf that isn't mine. So, as you come in the door, on your left straight away, is this Bailey bookcase here. And this is actually filled with my other half's books. He has more. We can't fit them all. There's another bookshelf downstairs of his. We still can't fit them all. Uh, we're both readers. But yes, so these are his books. Primarily fiction, but we do have some things from his, uh, his undergrad and his masters down at the bottom shelf, as well as some books that I want to unhaul that I've just put here so that they're not on my shelves. But yes, so let, let's let's quickly show you. Up the top here we have a fair number of his Terry Pratchett hardbacks, mostly from Discworld. And then as we move down, this one is double stacked, this shelf. And then space operas, I think they're called. Um, and some more Pratchett books. And then more books. And more books. And more books. These are the ones I want to unfold. I won't go through these in much detail because they're not mine. The only decoration I have on these is a singular fake ivy because uh, they're not my shelves, so I, I don't want to take them over. Then, one bookshelf down, still on this left-hand side, we have... I turned you too far. Uh, my shelf again! <laughs> Isn't all books. Let's, let's show you. So at the top here, we clearly have non-bookish things. These are nendoroids that I can't make because my little phalange can't manage it. Um, DVDs video games and my makeup and some jewellery because why not and then the next shelf down is also kind of makeup jewellery items of use etc <laughs> and a mirror i made when i was 12. Uh, <laughs> this is just so that they're actually within easy access i don't really have anywhere else to put them in the house but the stuff that you guys care about is most of my tbr and yes it is indeed organized by rainbow the rest of my shelves aren't, but I've always been tempted to do rainbow shelves, and this was kind of my my compromise, was to do this. In terms of what's on these shelves, we have only two things. One is a little robin tin that my grandfather gave me, which has pretty rocks in it, because hi, do you know me? Uh, so that lives there. And then up here, we have an interesting situation. Uh, this belongs on the lid of this, which is an old candle jar. Uh, but we're using the lid for a little tea light right now, as like a safety thing, so um, that's downstairs. Uh, and then I have a globe, stressable, which just lives in here. And this, separate of the other two things, is my TBR jar. And then I'll do a little close-up for you of the shelves so you can judge my TBR. And while we're on bottom shelves, as you can see, my books don't fit, but um... It's worse than that. Uh, these don't fit, so they just live here. <laughs> on the shelf I have a little ammonite. These little stones with an S and a T on. My cats were called Socks and Tigger when they passed. We got these. I will eventually, hopefully, be able to move them onto that shelf, but there just isn't room right now. So they live here instead. And what that bottom shelf belongs to is my non-fantasy shelf. So. First of all, I'm, I'm going to show you the, the next shelf up from the bottom. We have a nice banner in the way. This is a, a pin banner. I just kind of have it hung here because where else is it supposed to go? So let, let's just shove that up there for now. Uh, so on the end we have, this is actually my diary, and if you saw some cables that's because my hard drives live back there. This is the photo album that came in one of the Illumicrate boxes um, that you're supposed to use for like art prints and stuff. And then I just have my pretty edged books. Or just pretty books when it comes to this one. It doesn't have any pretty edges, but I just love this mine so much. Um, so yeah, a load of stenciled edge books. So if you don't know, this is Addie LaRue, this is A River Enchanted, A Marvelous Light, This Woven Kingdom, Gallant, and The Embroidered Book. Some of these I loved, some of these I did not. And then actually back up here again, so I organise my shelves, not my TBR, by their genre. And then within the genre, alphabetically. However, um, so this entire shelf is everything that isn't science fiction fantasy. <laughs> so 
So at the top here I have all of my classics. This is a, a some contestion with some of my bookish friends that actually have English degrees and education in this. Uh, I am a scientist, I consider these classics. I have moved them around a little bit. There are some that are now moved, but there are some that are not. Uh, <laughs> the one I'm thinking of primarily is To Kill a Mockingbird. It's an American classic, so that's my justification. And then Ghost of a Watchman is there because it's the next book. I'm not going to split them up. I think that's reasonable. I have moved them since I did a, a classic shelf tour, so Hannah, judge. Then coming down onto the second shelf and a little bit onto the third, these are my non-fiction books. I adore non-fiction and I clearly do not read enough of it. I have unhauled some non-fiction in my time, don't get me wrong, but yes, I clearly don't have enough non-fiction on these shelves, but everything I have on these shelves I love. And then yes, it does come down to the third shelf, which then goes into my uh, everything that isn't classic or non-fiction or science fiction fantasy. That, that's everything that's on here, but not too many, so this is where they live. And then in terms of the things that are on the shelves, up top for the classics we have just classic related things. I was gifted this bottle of um, Coco Chanel by my mother-in-law, who's passed now, and the smell does not suit me, and does not suit her, like this was hers and she didn't like the smell. But I kind of just think it's really cute. So it sits with my classics because it's a classic perfume. Uh, and then some of the miniature classics from Running Press and a Jane Eyre candle, which I love. Then on the non-fiction I have an amber and patchouli candle and the yellow art history thing tub from Illumicrate, as well as a little music box. And then on my everything else shelf I've got my, my trophy for getting gold in the Tantoy Form 1 in my Kung Fu tournament. I've got a cupcake mug and an owl mug filled with bookmarks. And then down below that obviously we have the banner that I mentioned before and the haggis. Because who doesn't need a haggis? And now we're on to the shelves that you guys will see the most often. These are my science fiction fantasy shelves. So down here I have a noisy beanbag and upon my noisy beanbag I have a calendar that the wonderful Caitlin from Manchester Rabbit gifted me and then I have a cushion cover that came from a Luma crate. Let's get into these shelves. <laughs> so up top, excuse the shaky camera, uh, I'm having to hold it. <laughs> Obviously starting with Surname of A with The Power by Naomi Alderman. I have some mugs on here, two are from a Luma crate. One is BB-8 and one is from Diana when I visited. Then to a slightly more steady shelf, we have a money jar, we have a teddy bear that my mother-in-law bought me for finishing my masters, we have the rose that I wore to her funeral, and then I have some symptoms. I've got Pascal, Belle, and Obi-Wan and Anakin. Then shelf three, so I've got another one of those fake ivies, I've got a little Rolo tin which I actually put foreign currency in, and a little tea strainer that looks like a teapot, I have Lucas the spider, I have the Pelinor series, I have all the books by Amy Undercott, this shelf is fantastic, and I have a light up 3D printed moon that Caitlin gave me because she's amazing. Then on this shelf, behind the ivy, we have a Steif Owl, as well as some 3D printed owls that my partner printed for me. I did have those around Other Words for Smoke by Sarah Maria Griffin, as well as the tarot cards that I sat across there, but when I actually ended up reading some more books I have to shift, every shift everything along and I didn't have the space for the cups there. And then in that corner that is a candle holder gifted to me by my mother-in-law, and the Mia Kaver dagger from Nevernight from Illumigrate. Then one of my favourite shelves that exist on my bookcases is my Skullduggery Pleasant shelf. So you can see that there are two paperbacks. Behind those I actually have the paperback for the first Skullduggery Pleasant book as well because that's how I actually read them. I don't have the paperbacks for the Faceless Ones or Playing With Fire. Uh, I intend to get them one day. Then along the front I've got a Skullduggery Pleasant lanyard and a little wristband that came years ago back in the day when the special editions came out in Dirich Smiths rather than Waterstones. And then inside there I just have a little pin badge from the until the end signing. And then down on the bottom here, so there is a little bit of spacing um, just in that gap there because I ended up moving some books around just because of refilling. But yes, so this box used to have that seahorse in. There's a long story behind that seahorse, but to simplify it, my parents sold it at a car boot sale when I didn't want them to, and I was very upset. 
when I was a kid that they did this. So as part of my 18th birthday present, they got me another one. <laughs> it's just a TY seahorse, uh, and I love it dearly. So, and it, you know, it's a, it, it's rainbow, and I won't say it right, um, so to me it's mythical, because it's rainbow, so it sits with the Four Treasures series, because mythical. Uh, and then on the other side, I just have some trinkets that I got from Amsterdam, some, some clogs. This is where I usually stand to film. This was partly because uh, the other shelves. <laughs> this one always had my partner's books on, so it felt weird to film in front of those. And the other shelves were always more messy because they're in arm's reach of my desk, and so I just shove shit on them. And so I would always film here, even though these were also still slightly messy. The, the, the better now, in my opinion. Yes, I know there's a gap here. This book has been removed for a reread. <laughs> it's not just gapped. Actually, let, let me just, let's just fix that for you. There we go. And the dragon fell off. And there. So, this bookshelf, because of the light switch and the door, can't be fully out. So there is actually a section of the bookshelf that is hidden behind this one. I've used that to put books that I want to keep and don't want to display for various reasons. I do have some books by a certain author that we can all guess that are in there. They have childhood memories for me and I need to keep them somewhere. I don't know where else to put them, but I don't want them on this on display. I do not support the author. So they're just kind of like tucked back in there, uh, as well as some other books, which I'll kind of mention as we get to them. So let's take a look at these shelves. Again, apologies for the shaky camera angle up here <laughs> as I lift it. Um, in the corner here is the Twilight books. And then we have another of those fake ivies. This is in a, a painted egg from Tanzania that one of my kung fu friends brought back. He's Tanzanian, he came to visit again, um, so that just lives in a little egg cup there. And then this is a blow dart I bought in D Guyana, because w why would I not buy a blow dart when they offered me a blow dart? Then the next shelf down, so seeing as this is Aragon I thought it was appropriate to put these little dragons in the background that I got from Wales, and then because this is blue I felt it matched the goddess of night, the Nyx mug and saucer that came in Lumacrate. And up here, this is actually a gift from my other half, which is one of those light up books that changes colour when you open it. I cannot remember what's in the corner of this one. Back there I've got some duplicates of books that I was gifted by friends. Um, I'm thinking of doing a giveaway for them, just so that someone else can enjoy them, um, but I'm not sure. And then also some of the Kathy's ring, Kathy's key, Kathy's book books are back there some of the, all of the, idiot. Then on this shelf we have some fab little pieces, so we've got a matching um, candle holder to the other one from my mother-in-law. We have a Sherlock's Bohemian Scandal candle that my other half adores, and speaking of him, he got me this owl for passing my undergrad. Then we have this tiny little T.Y. dragon that I got in Wales, and I say just in Wales, um, both the other dragons and this dragon I got in Conwy when I went on a field trip. And then this is a Harrods phone box. Uh, these are here, Dragon for Priory, and the phone box is because the bone season is set in London for the first book. And then over here I have some Illumicrate socks that match Priory, but I, do, I guess they should be sat there instead. <laughs> and then in the corner of this one I actually have two copies of the Mime Order. Uh, I got it in paperback at first and then got found this hardback secondhand. I still have not acquired the magnificent hard back of the song rising. And then in that corner I have some books that I do not care for, including the Rick Yancey series, because Rick Yancey is a knobhead. And by Rick Yancey series I mean the fifth wave. And then coming to the end of my alphabet for my science fiction fantasy books, here is a little Murderbot inspired case that is supposed to be for like earbuds and stuff, but I have lost my earbuds. Um, <laughs> So I sit that here, so it's near the murder box. And then a Medusa plate for law is what it was inspired by, but it's just Medusa, so that's fine by me. In the corner of this shelf, I have got a few other bits and bobs, a few uh, non-fictions that I just don't care to display anymore, a few driving license books, like how to learn to drive, uh, and then my Doctor Who books, which is why the TARDIS is in this corner. And then for these bottom two shelves, I may have lied slightly, these bookshelves are not just my science fiction fantasy shelves, because I needed somewhere for these to go. These bottom two shelves are primarily made up of my childhood books. Here I have a picture of me and my two best friends. They are wonderful, they are basically sisters to me. That of course has to live in my bookshelf. And then on the same thing here, this you can't see at the moment, and I'm not going to show you close-ups because that's not fair, um, but this is actually photos of me and my partner. 
um, that he 3D printed and so then when you shine a light through them, which he's rigged up inside the box, um, it then shows the photos and it's absolutely stunning. So these are some of my childhood favourites that I kept. One or two I've actually bought in adulthood but I felt like they belonged on here. So for example the Roman Mystery series, even though I'm still kind of collecting them and adding to them now, will always go on the shelf because why would I put them elsewhere? <laughs> and then I recently, like last year, got Alone on the Wide Wide Sea which I read when I was a kid, but it belongs on here. So yeah, if I, if I could get any books that I read as a child, they go in this region. Pop my family back on the shelves. And then this is the very bottom shelf. So, as you can see, Famous Five, Twins at St. Clair's, Mallory Towers, Famous Five Parodies. This is kind of my Enid Blyton shelf. Um, I will say that I now know as an adult that Enid Blyton is problematic as fuck. All of these I got as a child. I got all of these secondhand and I get them just because I like that they're a parody of The Real Famous Five. These are just the big books. So I've got my textbook from my masters. I've got a graphic novel that my partner got me about Vincent van Gogh. This is my undergrad dissertation and this is my postgrad thesis. And then in the back you can see there are more books tucked and back there. Uh, if you can tell the artwork there, that is one of the Discworld books. I don't display them because one, I don't have room, and two, my other half displays them. Those are the last shelves, so let's go back. And then just to complete the room tour, I thought I would show you my desk. So, so this is where I sit, where I work. I usually actually do my editing on my partner's computer because he has a a really really good PC and it's a lot quicker. That is my own personal laptop and this is the screen that I use for work because I work with maps so I need to be able to see those. You can see Tom Nook and Isabel in the back being goddamn adorable and my beautiful mug that Caitlin got me from Manchester Rabbit. In the back I have my plants there, the little watering can, yes they aren't doing great, I'm trying my best. And then a little lantern that I got from my grandmother a few years ago when I first moved to uni, as well as some bags of rocks because, hello, I'm a geologist. <laughs> then looking at the books, so I have my Kindle on the shelf uh, as well as my wallet. Shelf? On the desk as well as my wallet. Uh, just because I, I need it to be somewhere and this way it reminds me I have ebooks. Uh, and then this little stack is my bullet journal as well as the books that I have currently on the go that I'm actively reading. And then in between these brown bookends I have the books that are on my TBR for the month. That's where they live, just so that I'm constantly reminded that I need to get my butt in gear and read. <laughs> and it also keeps them separate from the rest of my TBR, as well as freeing up some space on my TBR shelves, which I desperately need. And that is my library tour. <laughs> so I'm, I'm quite happy with how my little library turns out. It's, it's not perfect. It is not quite big enough, <laughs> is anyone surprised? But this is where I sit and work every day, so I get to be surrounded by my books all the time. I've got enough space for me to actually utilise as well in my little office. I'm just really happy with it. I'm really happy with how it's turned out in the end. So yeah, I can't I can't be mad at all. <laughs> if you've watched this far to the end, thank you so much. I very much appreciate it. If you put a little um, computer emoji down below for my, my big ass screen uh, in the back there, <laughs> just so that I know that you got all the way this far. Let me know how you organise your books. Do you have your TBR and your red books organised differently or are they even actually all together on the same shelves? Um, I obviously do the rainbow for one and genre and then alphabetical by surname for the other. Do you do the same? How do you organise yours? Please let me know. I love seeing and hearing about how people organise their books. I always want new ideas. I'm always tempted to reorganise my books. <laughs> So, probably not the best idea, but please do it anyway. If you'd like to see some more from me uh, actually reading the books that I've shown you today <laughs> and talking about them, then please do hit subscribe. I release videos roughly every Saturday at 4pm British time, and I would love to see you there. Thank you so much for watching, folks, and I will hopefully see you in the next one. Bye!